Anybody, and I mean anybody who wants to get into hydroponics, should start right here. Ebb and Flow, also known as Flood and Drain. There really is no simpler or more reliable method of irrigating your favorite plants without soil. You probably already know that hydroponics works by dissolving all the food your plants need into water. With the ebb and flow technique, we cultivate our plants in an inert growing media such as rock wool, expanded clay balls, cocoa coir, or perlite. Now, on a physical level, this growing media serves to anchor the roots and support the plant. It's ideal for heavy fruiting annuals, but like I said, these substrates are essentially inert. I mean, they don't contain any nourishment for the plant like soil does, so we need some way of conveying the nutrient solution to the roots and then recirculating it back to the reservoir. Here's how the ebb and flow works at its simplest. You grow your plants in pots filled with your chosen growing media. They sit on a plastic tray, called a grow tray. Sure, okay, you can buy any old plastic tray from big box stores like Lowe's or Home Depot for a few bucks, but I really, really recommend visiting your local indoor gardening store. You'll get better service and advice and end up with something that's actually designed for the job to make your life, ding, easier. Look for ridges at the bottom like this so that any runoff nutrient solution is channeled away effectively rather than flat bottom trays that can suffer from pooling. The tray needs to have high sides of around 6 or 7 inches so that you can flood it effectively. Now, you've already seen that I'm a big fan of these fast-fit tray stands that raise your plants up a couple of feet, allowing you to fit a reservoir neatly underneath. I recommend at least 30 gallons of nutrient solution per 8 square feet of grow tray. Get a reservoir with a lid, too, because you'll have less evaporation and fewer algae issues. Now, the grow tray needs two holes. Usually, you have to drill these yourself. One hole is for bringing nutrient solution into the tray, and the other hole is to, you guessed it, accommodate the overflow so you don't end up turning your entire indoor garden into an ebb and flow system. Position both holes at the lowest point of the tray. You'll need some watertight fittings, of course, available as kits. I'm using a HydroFlow Ebb and Flow Fittings Kit. There's everything you need in here to bring nutrient solution into the grow tray and back to the reservoir beneath. Nutrient solution is pumped up to the grow tray until it reaches the overflow. You can adjust the height by adding extra blocks. At this point, your pump should switch off and the nutrient solution drains back into the reservoir through the pump itself. It's really important that all the nutrient solution drains back into the reservoir and your plants aren't left sitting in puddles. Now make sure your plants are sufficiently established in their pots so that the roots get wet. Otherwise, you should manually top feed at the beginning. Flooding shouldn't take longer than 5 minutes. If you sat there thinking, hey, a 2x4 tray at 5 inches steps holds 25 gallons and that will take an eco 100 about 15 minutes to flood, then firstly, thank you for paying attention. But you're not taking into account the volume taken up by the plant roots and the growing media in the tray. Bam! My rule of thumb, take the square footage of your grow tray, add 25%, multiply by 10, and choose a pump that shifts at least that many gallons per hour. Oh, look at that. An eco 100 will do just fine. Okay, flooding your plant's root zones is such an effective method of irrigation because it drives out all the stale oxygen-depleted air from around your plant's roots. Now, when the nutrient solution drains back into the reservoir, fresh air is drawn into the root zone, turbocharging metabolic rates and encouraging healthy roots. It also serves to clean the root zone of any excess salts. This is why ebb and flow consistently produces bigger yields than hand-watering. You know, plants just enjoy the routine that timers and pumps provide. Now, I recommend controlling your pump with a digital timer this will allow you to precisely time your floods so that your plants aren't sitting in nutrient solution for any longer than they need to. Segmental timers only work in 15-minute periods, which is too long. Remember, kids, as soon as you see nutrient solution flowing back into the reservoir via the overflow, your pump should be switched off. I also recommend using filters on your inflow and overflows. These come as standard in the fittings kits so that any stray bits of growing media or other particulates stand less chance of clogging your system. How often should you flood? Well, you basically need to consider three primary factors. Number one, the absorbency of your chosen growing media. Number two, the size of your pots. Fabric pots are awesome for the ebb and flow, and I also highly recommend checking them out. Three or five gallon pots should be fine for heavy fruiting annuals. Number three, the size of your plants. Newsflash, bigger plants drink more. You may well have to increase the frequency of your floods as your plants develop. I time my first flood around half an hour after my lights come on, and I don't flood any later than two hours before lights go off. 
Finally, nutrient solution maintenance. Top up with plain water or half-strength nutrient solution every few days, otherwise your nutrient solution will become more and more concentrated. Hey, plants use more water than minerals, so check as often as you can. My Blue Lab Guardian Connect transmits my nutrient solution concentration, pH, and temperature to my computer constantly. So, um, yeah, this is a really easy job for me. Try to keep your nutrient solution in the 66 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit range. That's 19 to 23 degrees Celsius. If your nutrients are getting warmer than this, you may need to invest in a bigger reservoir or a nutrient chiller. As a general rule of thumb, I completely change my nutrient solution every three to four weeks, more often when my plants are big and mature. Now, this is an interesting topic with a lot of metrics, so look out for my video that focuses just on that topic. Okay. <sighs> That'll do. Take a breath. You survived. I'll save modular flood and drain systems for another time, but you can check out the grow I did last year using the flow and grow system if you're interested. If you have any questions or comments, fire away. And please, if you enjoy my videos, consider hitting that subscribe button. It lets me know I'm loved. In any case, happy growing. Thanks for watching and check back soon. This is Everest, over and O-U-T out.